This is the Iashin trash can. No, wait, hold on. I think it might be that, wait, I don't, wait, hold, uh, no, I, I think this is the Iashin trash can, wait. No, this is the Iashin trash can. So I've made toilet seats fly, and I've always wanted to know what a trash can flies like. I have actually asked Iashin why they named it trash can. I'm, I'm guessing it's just because it's catchy and people are gonna remember it. Um, and maybe it's a joke too, who knows? <laughs> Uh, as I'm flying this around, I'm thinking, this is this is pretty darn peppy, but I'm also wondering what happened to my OSD, and then I realized, oh, it's just cut off by the screen because it's set to NTSC PAL kind of difference. And uh, that was definitely washout, as you saw there, definitely washout. I thought that was supposed to be fixed, as they say in their product description, no washout, because they're using the bigger motors. Oh, look, I found a friend. Hi, friend. How are you doing? Oh, look, here's another friend. Hi, how are you? Just hanging out with the tree, huh? That's cool. That's cool. Oh, look, there's a whole family here. I've got a whole, I feel right at home, right at home between all these trash cans. So this fly is pretty nice, but it's a whoop. Keep that in mind. This is a whoop. This is a 75 millimeter whoop. This is not a full blown five inch uh, quad, but it's flying really similarly. Now I am working pretty hard to keep it in the air. And uh, as you saw there, that was real wonky. So Something you may have already noticed is that the camera is not quite what you might expect. It's actually a 16.9 camera. It's a pretty interesting decision that they made there. And um, as a result of that, it doesn't have the same vertical field of view as a, a typical whoop camera or a 4.3 camera for that matter. But it is workable. It's not bad. This is the, EOS, the sorry the Cadex EOS 2. The camera is really beautiful. The resolution is really, really nice. But I would have liked them to put a CCD in there instead of a CMOS because the light handling on this is not, it's not fantastic. Oh, look, squirrels. And uh, yeah, there you go. So um, now I am in failsafe. <laughs> Clearly the range is no good. It's no better than the previous um, crazy B boards. So I'm just walking up closer to the quad and trying to arm it to get back to myself because I'm too lazy to walk that far. And yeah, okay, so let's let's move on to something else. This is the drivetrain off the previous Beta Pro version 2 with the Mobula 2S all-in-one flight controller board. So these are my little carbon frames that I've been building. This has 0802 motors. They're 12,000 kV. This is also on 2S, 2S uh, 300 million, the exact same batteries as the trash can. The all-up weight is about 8 grams lighter than the trash can. It's 42 grams. And uh, the performance is markedly different primarily because of the very, very large props and no prop guards. So it does perform very different. Also in this video, I have set my maximum throttle endpoint to 70. And that's the throttle endpoint. That's not the percentage of the throttle. So it's actually just 15% knocked off the top. And that is pretty much necessary because these motors do nothing after about that range on 2S. They just don't have the torque to keep going at that high range, so they might as well just chop it off. It's just sucking amps for no reason. As you can see, the performance of this thing is is kind of night and day compared to the, the, the trash can, and that's because it's set up like a real quad. Now, this is running the previous uh, Mobula board. This is not running a trash can board, so it doesn't have an, have an F3 processor on it. It's running at 4K, 4K. It is not running at 8K, 8K. But it moves pretty darn nicely. And it, I think that the trash can is gonna be a really excellent transition onto this frame. But let's continue on now. The Iashin trash can. Now I'm gonna talk about this thing at the end and I'll also give you my personal opinion on this thing at the end, but let's talk about the trash can first. So I just got this today, it's New Year's Day, I was gonna leave, I really don't have time, I'm just gonna try and make this really quick, but um, I'm sure you've seen other reviews on it already. But let's first talk about the camera on this thing. So this is the Cadex EOS 2, and it's a huge improvement all over the quality, the image quality of typical Whoop cameras. However, this is the 16.9 version of the Cadex EOS 2. I don't know why, actually, I have a clue maybe why they may have decided to go with the 69 camera. Aside from it may have just been cheaper because because Cadex made a whole ton of them and then realized nobody wants a 69 version because everybody, well, most people have 4.3 goggles. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe they decided to go with the 69 version because 
maybe the vast majority of newcomers or beginners that are going to be buying this thing are flying box camp box uh, goggles which primarily have 16.9 screens because they're cheaper to, to buy and make box goggles out of because they're this pre-existing product so maybe it's not a bad decision by Eoshin to do that it's a horrible decision for the most of the FPV community us pretty much aside from anybody that has a, a Dominator V3 like I do it's it's going to be a challenge to, <laughs> to kind of convert because it is a little bit of a squash screen. The 69 on this camera is not actually full 69. It is still stretched wide a little bit on my, on my goggles. I can definitely see that. However, it is squished if you look at it on a 4.3 um, screen. Also, that's not really the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that I think pretty much all now i'm generalizing here maybe there's a couple that aren't pretty much all 169 fpv cameras crop the sensor to get 69 crop the 43 sensor to get 69 except for the uh, eagle the the eagle the micro eagle i'm pretty sure that one i know has a full size uh, 69 um sensor so it's cropping to get 43 actually but this one doesn't definitely doesn't this one is is not a 69 sensor from what I can tell, or if it is, it's just as really crappy vertical field of view because that's the issue. It doesn't have the vertical field of view of a typical whoop camera or typical FPV cameras that we are used to. Now it's not bad and it's really nice that this, this, this frame has this nice top and it lets you kind of bend the camera really, really high all the way to the sky, which is super great. But it also makes it weird to fly. I mean, I'm not used to flying with that shallow of a, a vertical field of view anymore. So it's just kind of annoying. It's, it's not a deal breaker totally but it is it is really frustrating and annoying let's look at the frame now so the frame is a massive upgrade of from the mobula just a huge huge upgrade from the mobula it has so much reinforcing struts on here that even if you break half of them i'm pretty sure it's going to be totally fine you can crack the the, the um prop guards it's probably going to fly totally fine it is it does feel a little maybe a little bit more resiny than the the mobula which is also nice I'm, I'm not terribly worried that it's going to break. However, with the 2S performance, it's not really built to crash. And it's it's really fast. And you pretty much can break anything on this thing with that kind of performance. On 1S, I don't think you can break it, at least not very easily. Also, this canopy up here, it's more of a resiny material. It's not the hard plastic of the Mobula. So again, huge improvement. So that really does make a big difference in terms of durability. I think it is going to hold up much, much better. I don't think it's engineered properly to hold up well to 2S like bashing and smashing but hey everything will break if you push it hard enough <laughs> uh the motors the motors are 0803 and the reason it's 0803 not 0802 like the mobula which are, yeah mobula is 0802 is because they're trying to solve the washout issue and what washout means is that when you're coming out of a dive you're trying to hit the gas and pull out of the dive and the quad doesn't have enough rpm or throttle or whatever power to pull out of the dive so it's trying to like spin the motors up and it it just it runs out of RPM and it starts yawing all over the place. At least that's my best explanation and understanding of how and why the washout happens. But this thing still washes out. Now it's not as bad as as men, as pretty much all other whoops that I've flown, uh, except for the Tiny Hawk. I think the Tiny Hawk is maybe a teeny bit better even on its 1S. But I think that's because it's more it's better balanced. I'll talk about it later. Anyways. It still washes out, but the motor performance is great. They're 15,000 kV motors. The issue that I have with the motors is that the 15,000 might be a little low for 1S, particularly a 450 milliamp 1S battery, and it might be a little high for 2S. So the 2S performance on this thing is ridiculous. It's really, really fast. However, you do have the ability to kind of punish your batteries a little bit. And I think, I think they could have lowered the kV a little bit for 2S. But... I'm pretty sure they wanted to make it a dual purpose quad for 1S as well. And the 1S performance is not stellar. It's okay. It's not it's not bad. It's maybe just slightly worse than the Tiny Hawk, which is fine. It's not a big deal. The real issue with the flight performance of this thing is the weight. On one so the all up weight of this thing is is 49 grams with the 2S, the two 300 million batteries that it comes with, which is recommended, which is what I highly recommend too. I don't recommend you run two 450 million batteries. It's going to be terrible. It's 49 grams, and at 49 grams, on a, on a quad of this size and of this power, it's getting to the point where it's a little bit hefty, and um, if you're not on the gas, you're kind of dropping like a rock, and if you're on the gas, you're shooting up to the moon, so it's kind of a little finicky to fly, especially on 1S, and the 1S issue is that it just doesn't have the power 
to manage a 450 milliamp battery with its all of weight. Now, the camera does weigh more. They're using a full blown VTX in there. That's 200 milliwatt. That does weigh more. They're putting this LED thing on the back. It does weigh more. The frame does weigh more. They beefed it up quite a bit. So everything weighs more. And all these things are positive additions. However, it does affect flight performance a little bit. I'll talk about flight performance more at the end. Let's not talk, talk about the inside of the thing. So it is using a full-blown 200 mil, milliwatt VTX, and it, you've probably seen it on other channels, but it's a, it's a separate board. It's like a, it's like a whole half board in there. It's not, it's not like a teeny tiny VTX stuck to the back of the camera or just floating around in there. It's, it's a whole board in there, and that, that's going to be a little bit of an issue for me later, but it's a whole board. And that is bound to the flight controller in here, which is an all-in-one board. Now, this is a 2S flight controller, and it's the Crazy B F4 board, and it's performs just like the Crazy B F3, except it's F4 and it runs the higher gyro rate, which is fantastic, which is great. Uh, I've had a lot of these boards and they're shockingly reliable, so I'm not concerned about the reliability of this board, at least in my experience. Maybe I've just gotten really, really lucky, but I've literally had 20 of these boards given around to people. I've been using them for a while now and they have all worked flawlessly and I have punished them pretty hard. So I'm, I'm very confident that this is probably going to have a good uh, overall quality control because they've done a really good job about keeping quality control on these boards. Now it is an F4 board and it does run AKAK, which is a huge improvement on whoops in general. And this, the performance of this thing is really, really good because of that AKAK. However, I would say the 1S performance of a Tiny Hawk is a little bit better, primarily because it's it's better balance and it's it a, has a lighter overall all up weight with the 1S battery. Now lastly, let's talk about the firmware that it comes with. So this comes with Betaflight, who knows what, 3.5 point whatever, it might come with 4.0, it doesn't matter. It comes with the recent version of Betaflight, which is totally fine. However, the one biggest flaw about all of these ready-to-fly things is that they put all this effort into building this thing, and if you notice, the props are even inverted. They're, they're spinning invertedly, and somebody had to go into the firmware and set it up to spin inverted. And that is the main point that I'm going to make. When you get this thing, somebody has definitely gone in there and set up the firmware. However, they've done a really poor job of setting it up. While the orientation might be correct, it comes with 8K, 2K. The gyro rate is 2K. And I think I might know why, but it's 2K. I didn't even fly this thing on defaults because I've flown lots of whoops on defaults. And so the other things that are not on are air mode, anti-gravity, and dynamic filters. And if anybody knows anything about Betaflight, you know that anything you run, especially a micro, you're gonna leave your dynamic filters on if for nothing else. Additionally, when you go to the voltage, somebody did set that up correctly. The minimum warning voltage is 2.9 volts, which according to the micro community and myself, I think that's the correct voltage to set this thing to. However, on 2S, you do have the ability to draw amps to, to to kill your batteries. So you do have to kind of be a little bit cautious there, especially on these, these higher KV motors for 2S. But again, somebody went in there and set that voltage. And then when you go to the PIDs, their default, which is totally fine, it flies great on default. Betaflight has done a, they have, the devs have done an amazing job of making this thing fly great. But then they set the rates. They set them to 1.2 and 1.3, which is further supporting my theory that somebody went in there and set this thing up. And also they have the, they have already set the arm switch to aux one and the flip over crash protection to aux three, which is totally fine. All that is totally fine. The part that's really confusing is that if they think that the majority of people buying this thing are going to be beginners or new pilots or whatever, why doesn't it come with the software set up to actually work? Meaning all you need to do is bind your controller and go. I mean, the new pilot isn't going to know how to set up Betaflight, and I doubt new pilots even know what dynamic filters, air mode, or anti-gravity are to be able to turn them on and off. And I think it comes default in 8.2 mode, 8K PID loop refresh and 2K gyro refresh, which is the opposite of what it should be if you're going to run a lower rate. I think they did that because it doesn't work otherwise. <laughs> like if you have air, if you have dynamic filters off, you definitely can't jack up your gyro rate. And I'm pretty sure if I try, I didn't even try it. I'm sure you guys can try it. People can debate it. It, it doesn't matter. It, no one's going to fly this thing with dynamic filters off. The dynamic filters off on a, on a brushless whoop, it just flutters up to the sky because the vibrations are ridiculous on this thing. So I don't know why they did that. That's pretty much the biggest issue in my eyes, aside from the camera's vertical field of view. Now, let's get to the point where I talk about what I actually think about this thing. So... This is, this is a little bit of a touchy topic because it is, it is definitely opinion-based. And take, take 
everything I say with a grain of salt because this is hugely opinion-based. It is my personal opinion and you are more than welcome to have your own personal opinion and I'm sure you do. Note that I am also rather spoiled with products. I have I developed the products myself. I build everything. I come up with things to build and try to improve things. I've been doing this a while and I am generally spoiled. So my opinion and view is going to be different than yours. If you disagree with my opinion, please put it in the comments below. Just be just be respectful and that's totally fine with me. However, I feel like it's somewhat pointless to have a whoop that's this powerful and this fast. Now, it is an incredible sight to see, and it's 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 like alien to see this thing fly so fast the way it does. And just to think that I'm flying something that's a whoop at the speeds and the, the way I'm flying them. However, the 2S performance is is a little bit much for indoors. It, it's it's really it's really really powerful. I mean, I was flying this thing inside. I had to dumb my throttle endpoint down to 50 and then it was controllable and it was fine however like i said the the weight on this thing with the 2s batteries is about 49 grams and that becomes it starts to become a little bit of an issue with in flight performance again this is just my opinion i've been flying a lot of these things so i've become kind of a snob for flight performance and so that's just my opinion i don't think there's too much point to have a whoop that's this powerful i think that if they wanted to make it a 2s whoop then it would have been better off if they just lowered the KV of the motors rather than trying to have this little in-betweener KV so that they could make it a 1S and 2S. The 2S is definitely an improvement on 1S, mostly because when you push the throttle, you get a really good response when you give it throttle. On 1S, it kind of struggles to give you really great response. Everything on 1S struggles to give you really great response. Even my little, my little frames like this, they still struggle to give you really a punch on 1S. On 2S, they give you great punch. But on 1S, it is a little bit of a struggle. And I do like whoops on 2S. However, you got to lower the overall speed tremendously. And you also don't get more fly time on 2S. In fact, you get less flight time on 2S. A single battery, 450 milliamp, in, on, a, on a whoop of proper weight is going to give you much more flight time than this thing on 2S or anything, any whoop on 2S. And that's a discussion for another video. I think the previous video, but whatever. It is what it is. Aside from the vertical field of view on the camera, I think this is an overall really good product. I think the um, F4 flight controller in there is really, really good. The Crazy Bee has been incredibly reliable to me. However, the one big unfortunateness about this flight controller is that the receiver on it totally blows. It totally blows. I mean, it comes with a little quarter wave antenna built into it, and I have been installing half wave antennas on my little whoops here. As you can see, the white wire is the half wave antenna. And it does do a little bit better, but I feel like the electronics in there are just tuned to a totally different frequency and they just don't pick up the, the thing very well. I've had other all-in-one, not whoop boards, but other all-in-one tiny micro boards that do a much better job with signal. And I've had some that go forever, seemingly to just keep going. Like the thing can't doesn't even have enough battery to get going farther. But with things of this class that have this much power and this much performance, the inability to really reach the top of a building to dive is annoying because it weighs little and you can do things like that and it's really fun to do things like that so it's frustrating to not have that ability so that is the single biggest downside to me the snob that's spoiled but to the vast majority of everybody out there it's not going to matter and it's a great product and it has really good uh, signal range for indoors and whatever you're going to use it for the part that's really curious is that they put a 200 milliwatt vtx on this thing but the signal range sucks like I mean, 25 milliwatt video is fine. It goes farther and farther than the, the range that it's going to give you already. So, I mean, what's the point of going to 200 milliwatts without improving the receiver? Otherwise, I think that this might be the best product to transfer over onto, the best product so far, to transfer over onto one of my little frames. I think the, the larger motors are great. The 15,000 kV is going to be fantastic for 1S. You're going to have to dumb down the max endpoint quite a bit to run it on 2S on these large props. But it is going to work, and it's going to be really good. The one annoying part is that the um, VTX is a whole separate board. It's a big board, so it's going to be kind of annoying to cram it into this build. It's going to be a much taller build with that VTX on there. I think I'm going to put it <clears throat> underneath the flight controller. Otherwise, the camera will fit into the newbie drone uh, camera mount. You will have to modify the mount a little bit, maybe melt a little hole for the wires to come out, but the camera will fit in there. You might have to cut a big hole in there 
it'll take some modifications, but the camera will fit into this newbie drone mount, and I think this is the best mount that I've seen to date, and it really is sturdy, and it really is fantastic. It has not given me a single issue. It's just that uh, I had to tape my camera. It, it looks ghetto. My builds are ghetto. Don't, don't worry about that. But overall, I think it is a very good product. I think it's, um, yeah, it's a very good product. I think a uh, good job, Yashin. They could do better, absolutely. And there are also more Whoop products of this class coming out. So you can wait if you want. If the 69 is going to be an issue for you, it might actually be a real issue for you, and it might be a deal breaker for you. So I would also caution you about that. If you if you don't have a pair of 69 goggles, it is going to be squished. And at the end here, I'm going to put the same video at the beginning, but in the regular 4.3 view, so you'll see what it looks like. And as far as I can tell, there are no settings on the camera. There's no way to plug into the camera and actually change the settings. Maybe there are. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But so far, I haven't found anything set up. Now, let's talk about this thing. I've been developing this thing, and this is a uh, this with the 2S batteries, the same exact actual Yashin batteries, exactly the same batteries as flying on this thing. Uh, it's 42 grams all up weight. It's using the large 66 millimeter props. If you watch my previous videos, you will know more about it already. Um, the link will be in the description below. But um, link to the previous videos discussing this more in detail, but I'm just going to talk about how I got it to work on 2S. So 2S was an issue with this thing because it's using 0802 motors that are 12,000 kV. 12,000 kV is a little bit much for 2S on uh, these large props. I think that for 2S it's probably going to be better off with like seven or 8,000 kV, um, but it will work. You just have to dumb down the endpoint to 70. So when I was flying this around, I had the endpoint dumbed down to 70, and that really made a world of difference to make it controllable and flyable on 2S. Other than that, the PIDs did change quite a bit. When you put it on 2S, the PIDs become pretty much a default beta flight. When you put it on 1S, you're going to need to jack up the PIDs enormously because it just has a whole lot less power. I am I have a couple of uh, 1103 motors on the way, the first being the, the, um, the Racer Star 1103, which previously I have used, and it hasn't been a very good um, 1103 motor. However, I took a close look at the more recent ones, and it looks like they actually put bearings in it and that means they might have improved the magnets and the various other components as well. So I do have some of the Racer Star 1103s coming, and it would be really great if they worked well. Uh, I have them coming at 10,000 kV, which is going to be great for 1S and probably a little bit too much for 2S, but it's going to be fine. Um, I'm hoping that uh, they have improved it because that's like an $8.50 motor, and it would really open the doors to this thing. The one big unfortunate part is that the control boards that I want to use, the one on the trash can, don't have very good control range. So if somebody knows of an all-in-one board that's an F4, has 6 amp ESCs, and has good range, please let me know. I'm not really a fan of using the 16x16 16 16 stacks. However, I'm not opposed to it because the range on this thing is so not good that I really would like the range. I would consider putting a separate uh, receiver on board just to get the range. I don't know if there's a solder pad on this board to actually give it S-Bus in. Maybe there is, but it's really unfortunate because it's such a simple little item and I don't really want to complicate it any more than it already is, but uh, I might have to just to get that range in. Unfortunately, TBS is not interested in making a long-range version of this all-in-one board. That's really unfortunate. I really hope that there's a version that comes out that does have that range issue fixed. Otherwise, this is, this, is, this is one of the most fun things that I've flown in a long time. It has amazing performance, and I, and I, I almost prefer to fly this to my 5-inch because I can really fly it anywhere, and I never have to worry about anything at all flying this thing because it's so lightweight. On 2S, it is really powerful, and it is really fast, but still, it weighs 42 grams. It's really hard to cause problems with something that weighs that little on 2S. Okay, more about all this stuff in the future. I am going to transfer this onto one of my frames, but not until my little micro race wire comes.